I'd like to thank the Brand Foundation its, and its supporters for this award, which will definitely go a long way into understanding the causes of epilepsy in some of our little patients. I'm a paediatric neurologist from the Royal Children's Hospital in Melbourne, and uh, the research our team does is driven by the patients we see in the clinic. Um, epilepsy is probably the most common neurological disorder we see uh, in, our ch in our patients, and uh, it's got many causes. In approximately 70% of uh, our patients, we can treat the epilepsy fairly effectively with uh, anti-convulsant or anti-seizure medications, but that leaves approximately 30% of children who have what we call drug-resistant epilepsy. Um, epilepsy is primarily a paediatric disease. Most, most people who develop epilepsy develop it in childhood, and it can come on at any age. In fact, this morning before I flew up here, I was in our neonatal unit seeing a three-week-old baby who's been having seizures probably since before he was born, in fact. Um, of the patients who have drug-resistant seizures, uh, a major cause are patients where a part of the brain has not developed normally in the pregnancy, as was this little baby in the clinic. And uh, the, the research project uh, that uh, this Brain Foundation Award will support uh, is to try and understand the causes of these uh, lesions or malformations better. We have a very active um, epilepsy surgery program in Melbourne, uh, led by Simon Harvey and Virginia Maixner. Uh, and these patients with these lesions, often the only treatment that gives them hope of curing their epilepsy or reducing the seizures is to actually remove these developmental lesions from the brain. And we approach all patients and parents of these children before they go to epilepsy surgery, asking if we can actually save some of that tissue that's resected. Thus far, nobody has said no. We've been doing this for a couple of years, saving tissue. We haven't yet had the funds to do all the things we'd like to do with it. So in the theatre, as the brain tissue is removed, it goes straight into dry ice and then off to our lab. Uh, and the aim of the research project is to really understand the causes of these lesions and it's emerging that these lesions have a genetic basis. There's a genetic error that's taken place during brain development in a population of the cells that form these lesions that cause the seizures. And we're trying to understand by directly studying the brain tissue the nature of these mutations uh, or gene changes, whether those changes are just in the tissue or in the rest of the body or are a combination of a number of mutations. Um, the funding from this award will help us do the genetic testing we'd like to do, which is called whole exome sequencing. Some of you might have heard of the great advances in genetic testing that we can now rapidly and cost-effectively screen all of our 22,000 genes, something that about 15 years ago cost $100 million to do, now costs $1,000 to do per patient. Um, what will this mean for the patients and the children we look after? All the parents that we have who have children with, with these severe forms of epilepsy want to know why it's happened. Is there a cause that that can be identified? Is this a genetic cause? Is this something that can recur in future pregnancies? Which is very important. We hope we can answer that with this testing. We also hope that by understanding the genetic cause and exactly which part of the lesions hold the mutations, that might hold promise for better forms of surgery to treat these severe forms of epilepsy, uh, more restricted forms of surgery, but also if we understand the pathways of the genes that are affected, um, there are maybe, that may open avenues to better medical treatments by targeting the therapy directly to the pathway affected. So once again, on, on behalf of our team in Melbourne, uh, Professor, Associate Professor Paul Lockhart, Simon Harvey and Virginia Maixner, uh, uh, we're very honoured to receive this award and I very, we'd very much like to thank the Brain Foundation for their generous support. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Professor Burke, for the introduction. I would <clears throat> first like to thank the generous donors and the Brain Foundation for the honour of receiving this award uh, for our research. Um, I have the privilege of working with Professor Stuart Grieve at the uh, Translational Imaging Lab in, uh, at the University of Sydney and Dr Geoffrey Parker at uh, Royal Prince Alfred Department of Radiology. Our research is into a disorder with many names but the two the most commonly used are pseudotumor cerebri and idiopathic intracranial hypertension. 
It commonly affects young females, but can occur in anyone. And its main symptoms are chronic headache and eye disease, which can result in permanent blindness. A definite cause is not truly known, but what we do understand is that there is a high pressure of the fluid that surrounds the brain. This then begins to block the, the veins. Inserting a stent or a metal cage within these veins to open up and, rest and restore some of the normal blood flow can bring down the pressure, can cure the disease, preserving vision and getting patients off medication permanently. There's been a revolution in this particular area for this condition in the last 15 years and RPA leads the world in this area. Now for any patient to receive this treatment they must first undergo an invasive diagnostic test and the test when I tell it to you sounds fairly brutal but it's not as bad as it sounds. We insert wires and tubes which are passed through a small incision in the groin through the large veins of the body all the way up to the top of the brain to record pressures. This must be done to see if their condition will respond to treatment. Our first but modest aim is to develop an MRI scan to replace this invasive test. Our lab has refined a new type of cutting edge MRI technology which can exact blood flow in four dimensions in any part of the body, something which has not been possible until a few years ago. This will allow us to virtually explore blood flow through the veins like never before. With the clinical experience at RPA Hospital with this disorder and this new MRI scan, I wanted to collaborate with these world-class researchers into developing advances for the benefit of our patients and to expand our understanding of the condition. Our initial experience with a few cases have revealed some interesting observations which will help us realise these goals. No doubt we are excited and we will put this money to good use. Thank you.